Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So, uh, today we are going to be working on the ore processing system. We're going to be overhauling a little bit of that. You know, we've got this ender, ender chest, right? Blue, 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 and that's where all the ores go. And I've got this here, which is just kind of other stuff that's not currently being processed. And then down here, I've got all the different, you know, all the different ores that it runs and, you know, all that stuff. So I think what we're going to do, uh, we've got this ender chest here, but I'm going to set up a separate one, in fact. And it's going to be just completely managed by just a ton of export buses. So let's order ourselves, just really, really quick, let's order ourselves an ender chest. This will be kind of, actually, let's order, let's order two of these. We're only going to use one this episode, but the next episode we'll use, you know, another one. Um, and I th think we should probably go ahead and get... Uh, let's go ahead and get like four exporters to start with and let's go ahead and get ourselves capacity cards like eight of those because it'll be two per exporter which actually I guess technically we won't be using an ender chest next episode I don't guess no we won't be but that's fine we'll go ahead and get two in case we need an, an extra one I'm sure we'll eventually use it so um, okay, so what I want to do is I want to set up an exporter. Because um, I don't really want cable connections all over this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to have just right down here, maybe. Okay, actually, you know what? Scratch all that. Uh, I just realized this pack, I don't know why, what I was thinking about. This pack has extra sales. Um, this pack has extra sales, so we're actually going to use that. Uh, because there's a really nifty, really, really nifty thing that we can do here. Um, if we take a look at export buses, there's one from Extra Sales called Ore Dictionary Export Bus. And it requires two fuzzy cards, four acceleration cards, and an export bus. Let's go ahead, let me get a few of those fuzzy cards. Two of these. Actually, I almost forgot about this thing, and then I was like, I was trying to think of how I want to do it, and then I was like, oh yeah, we got extra sales. So, uh, this thing pretty much has export buses and stuff built in, so, uh, if I recall, um, if I recall so, it should be extremely fast. So what we'll do is we'll just pull up, um, what did I do with my Sardis wrench? Did I throw that in there? Oh, that's no, right here. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to pull up, uh, this export bus. We don't actually need we're going to put down our or dictionary export bus. And actually, we got to put a star there, if I recall. I think that's right. And it's been a little while since I've used, well, not a little while since I've used them, but it's been a little while since I've played around with them. But for example, if I took, say, a redstone ore and I dumped this into the system. Yeah, okay, there we go. See, it's pulled out basically anything that's an ore, anything that classifies as an ore. Um, so aquamarine shale and redstone in our system classify as ores. So let's pull those out. Of course, they can't go anywhere because they can't go into the macerator. They can't be macerated. So, um, aqu aquamarine shale, we're going to have to handle that. I'm probably going to actually just use a crusher. Um, you could say that the, uh, Astro Sorcery got a really big update. We're going to be getting into all of that stuff. Some really cool stuff from Astro Sorcery. But yeah, we'll use that. I'm going to save these. Because I want to keep these just in case we ever need to filter anything specific. That way we'll have those available. Um, and I'm just going to move these up to here. We're going to be handling all of this stuff. This stuff is all special. You know, we've got we've got coal, we've got appetite, we've got sapphire, we've got amber bearing stone, appetite, or wait, I already did appetite, lapis, uh, black quartz, uh, cinnabar, sardis quartz, redstone, diamond, emerald, um, and I think that's everything. All of these have special requirements that we need to meet. So what we're going to do, let's put this just right there and right there and hide that again. That way we can do it all through one export bus. I think that would be better uh, than doing multiples. And I'm actually just going to toss all this stuff into there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab this. I'm going to take this downstairs with us, down to the ore processing area, because that's where I kind of need access to it. 
and we'll just set it right there. Okay, and then also um, aquamarine shell needs to get processed as well. All right, so all of these things, we've already set this up. You know, it processes these just fine. They go through, they get done. Also uranium, um, which I don't have a sample of uranium in here, but it gets processed as well. Oh, wait, it's right here. And the nice thing is we don't have to worry about if maybe one day we get a different type of silver or a different type of aluminum or something like that. It's still going to come down here and get processed. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is right here, um, certain things can be processed in the, I think this just feeds directly over into the macerator, right? I don't think there's anything. Um, basically, the items get imported. Okay, so right here it's extracting just on this line and it goes to the macerator or the electric furnace, depending. Electric furnace is only getting pulverized lead. And then the macerator is getting, you know, whatever. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up... Since everything's going to be coming through this line, let me just grab all these different samples. These are the things that uh, we don't necessarily want them to just go straight into the macerator. Some of these can just be macerated, I think. Um, I don't think aquamarine shell can. Coal cannot. Actually, none of these might, may not just macerate any of these. Which, if so, wouldn't that be awesome? Because then we wouldn't even have to worry about... Any of this. I mean, I could find out pretty easily. In fact, I was expecting some of these to be maceratable. But if we did that, look at that. None of them can just be auto macerated. That actually makes our lives a little bit easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, let me go grab a, I guess, um, let me go grab a crusher, a double crusher, in fact. And I think what we'll do is we'll just run like mo at least most of this stuff just through double crushers um, is what we'll do. Now certain things I don't think can be double crushed. Uh, cinnabar, for example, I think what we'll probably do is just smelt it. I mean, I think there's a, uh, technically we could use Thalmcraft to get double on that. Uh, Flux Anodizer right there we could, we could do to get two. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and just straight smelt this for Quicksilver. Um, I mean, there's that other type of cinnabar that we could get from it, but we can automate ways to get that too, so, uh, if we find ourselves needing it. So, first up, let's go ahead and just get ourselves just one of these crushers from Actually Editions. So, I'm going to need just a couple of these basic coils, and there's two crushers. And then we're going to need the advanced coils. Let's get two of these, two of those, and... There's our double crush. Okay, quest complete, crush. Uh, so right here, we'll go ahead and take a loot chest. These have pretty good output, so we're going to use that. Mud bricks from Tinker's Constructs. Okay. Um, and then let's get ourselves a power cell, and we'll go ahead and just link said power cell. There we go. And for right now, we're going to use just one of these. We'll probably end up adding some more, I imagine. But uh, we'll do, let's see, we'll set up our double crusher setting like right here is fine. And then we'll do a, let's see, how do I want to set this up? Um, actually, we can just set it up right, yeah, right here, be fine. We'll say output, power sale, there you go, you're linked up. Let's go get some XNet stuff real quick, because I am going to want that as well. So we'll just get some, just standard connectors should be fine. I don't think we're going to need a whole bunch of power for this. And just some cables. And let's go back down to the IC2 area. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a connector on the back side of this. We are going to don't connect. That's off in the east direction. So don't connect there. And then we're going to add a connector setting right there. And then we just need to run this over. So I think what we'll do is we'll just run this out to right there. That's going to plug up the power. And we're going to say that, uh, let's see, let's grab our controller. Uh, the advanced power sale, you can, see that's energy line. That's fluids. I don't really have space, though. So, let's actually pull that up. 
Okay, we'll pull that up. We'll set the power cell up instead. We'll put it on top of the stubble crusher. That'll be fine. I think that's what we'll do. Because I don't have space for power line, so. Okay, so the, the double crusher. What we're gonna do is on the same channel it has just the general extraction. Um which will be let's see, let me actually set this to uh to not extract for just a minute. We're gonna say that you can um well you can extract, but you need redstone power to do it. In order to extract. And then what we're going to do is say right here on the double crusher, you can insert. And it's not currently inserting. That's great. And let's grab these things. So I'm pretty sure all of these can run through the double crusher. I would imagine uh, we'll find out. So we're going to do aquamarine shale, coal ore, appetite, because we don't want our other ores like the ones that uh, were running through the other system, through the IC2 system. We don't want those to get ran through here. Uh, Cinnabar is not going to get crushed up. Black Quartz can go through the crusher, and it actually comes out as the the block itself. So, But I think all of these should go through the crusher just fine. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll say uh, on this crusher, you can insert, but you can only insert Aquamarine Shale. Coal ore, appetite, emerald ore, sardis quartz ore, diamond ore, redstone ore, black quartz ore, and lapis lazuli ore. There we go. And I think the drawer system, okay, it can't insert on this line. But I think it would be okay if I set it up to, uh, well, I could extract on a different line. That'd be fine. Um, okay, so it's going to insert all of these things. And then in addition, you are also going to insert, just dump all that stuff into there. Um, amber bearing stone can be ran through the crusher. Sapphire ore can be ran through the crusher. Now this isn't going to necessarily be the best possible output for every single thing. However, that's not really an issue. Because metals, all this stuff's about to be free, so why worry about it? Like, why nitpick over it? When we could just set whatever is pretty fast set it up and just let it go so that is the current plan so we'll just dump that stuff into there and i'm going to keep one of each of these just so that we have them once again for filtering in case i ever in the future i need some of the different ores i, like, I always like to keep at least one of every ore just so i've got it and uh, just for future possible uses kind of a thing okay so that stuff's all set up so let's grab you know a bunch of this coal for example Let's just load up on this stuff, and let me dump that cobble. And now if we dump this into the system, it is going to take a little while for it to catch up, because, you know. Um, which actually, we could just dump it into this ender pouch, in fact. We take a look, and if we give it just a second, which actually, did I ever set it to insert, though? Oh, you know what? I set the this to extract. Um, we're going to set it to ignore redstone. So there we go. We've got coal. I'm going to go ahead and set, set auto split items to on. So if we get, you know, say, say we only had 18 coal ore, it would do 9 here, 9 there. So that'll be good. And then what we need to do is set up our power cell. Sitting right there. It's going to output uh, to the double crusher and it's going to start running. Um, you can see it's taking a little while to generate the power or to build up the power, but that's fine. But it is taking that coal ore and it's breaking it down, which is what we want to see. And so then we're going to say, um, right over here, we're going to say that you can, let's see, we're inserting into the drawers. Uh, this is, that's a separate line. Uh, this is the one that connects to all the stuff. Let's say this line right here connects into the drawers, extracts from the ender chest from the magic bean farm and the electric furnace that'll be the perfect one so we're going to do right here we're going to say create extract um every 26 stacks okay so if we take a look here the coal is getting pulled out it's getting sent upstairs into the storage drawer which is good that's what we want to see okay now i'm going to i got to get through this wall <laughs> um let me actually just go over here and i'm going to open this up for just a second actually going to open it up like right here 
so we can come in and out of here for right now. Because um, I haven't set up false blocks for that section. Okay, so the coal's getting getting broken down. I am probably going to add another, maybe another, another double crusher up there with the exact same settings. Okay, now the only other thing that we really need to process differently is cinnabar. Cinnabar is the only thing that's not going to go through the crusher. It's going to just immediately get, uh, it's going to get smelted. And, it, you know, it can go through any of these. It's going to make quick silk. Okay, so what we're going to do is just the electric furnace line. Um, let's actually set, that's extracting. Uh, let's actually tell this to stop extracting for just a second here. So, well, actually, it's not going to, never mind. We're not going to tell it to stop extracting. This line here that inserts into the electric furnace, this is right here, it extracts from the centrifuges, inserts into the electric furnace, and can also insert into the auto compressor and the drawer controller, none of which can accept cinnabar. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up this uh, this connector. It says magic bean in it's not magic beans, it's just in the same, the connector's in the same block space as the magic beans. Uh, right here we're going to say that you can... Uh, we're going to say Cinnabar or and we're going to say Extract. Stack. 20 seconds. Okay. It did get some tiny piles of Astral Star Metal Dust and Stardust. Um, that is due to the fact that this doesn't currently have a place and I need to teach it its place. Just really, really quick. This stuff can compact into Stardust. That's great. Um, I've got some duplicates in here. Just got to find them. There's Copper and I think I've got Copper again over here. I do. So we're going to go ahead and slot that one instead. There we go. It's going to start compacting that and making stardust. That was kind of backed up in the system there. No biggie. And then over here, I'll just dump in that. Okay, so stardust, it's not currently going anywhere because we don't have that slotted in a drawer. So we're going to do that really, really quick. And if I was to throw in, say, cinnabar, we should see. There we go. We just got a piece of Quicksilver. So let's go slot Stardust and Quicksilver. And the nice thing is if anything ever backs up, it's just going to be right there. You know. So we'll say Stardust, Quicksilver. They can go in here. Now Star Metal Ore, it's not currently set up in filters. I put that into the Crushers, if you recall, the Macerators, on purpose. We're going to be handling that just a little bit differently. But for now, we'll set this up. That'll be fine. Let's get ourselves some void upgrades. Let's get ourselves some storage upgrades. Um, well, I don't have any. Well, void upgrades is fine. I'll, I'll make some more. I've got to make more treated wood. It's just a crafting step, basically. Um, let's toss in... That needs a void upgrade. This Stardust Quicksilver combo needs a void upgrade. Then over here, we need void upgrades for tin, lead, copper, silver, osmium, aluminum, um, cobalt and ardite I can wait on, platinum needs one, nickel, magnesium, lithium, thorium, boron, all those need void upgrades. We also need void upgrades on this side. And also, uranium is going to need it as well. Okay, yeah, let me, um, give me just a second. I'm going to go make up some more tree of wood. Oh, but if we, uh, for example, if we come over here and we tossed in all this cinnabar, and we gave it just a second there, there's 11, 21, 31, 32. There we go. So it is taking that cinnabar from the IE system, and it's dumping it through to the ore processing system and then sending it up to our drawers, which is what we want to see. Um, we are going to be setting up some automated treated wood here pretty quick. But for right now, I'm going to just manually craft this. I need to upgrade my creosote storage. But anyways, there is a ton of treated wood. Okay, but there's 20 void upgrades. And I also ordered 20 of the uh, max tier storage upgrades. Um, that way I can upgrade storage on a few things while we're down here. Um, but anyways, the uranium, and I'm going to go ahead and void that uranium-235 as well, because we're not really using that stuff. Rare Earth. Then over here, I've got, I think, most of these already voiding. Uh, Sardis Quartz, Charged Sardis, Black Quartz, Amber, um, Appetite, Aquamarines, 
yeah, I think I can get by with just those for now. And then we'll go ahead and upgrade storage on all of this stuff. Try to get it up to 1664, which is a pretty good amount, I think. And I guess we'll go ahead and do Cobalt Nardite, even though we're not going to be handling those just yet. So I need to make more storage upgrades. It's fine. I can make those later. But anyways, we got we got everything kind of voiding and, and whatnot. Okay, so really at this point, all of these things can just go in to the system. Like I can just toss in... I mean, it's still running cold. It's, like I said, it's going to take a little while before it catches up with that. And I will probably eventually have to speed this up. We'll see. Um, you know, I consider doing just like an auto mining system, but I think I'd just as well have this. So there we go. It's smelting up Quicksilver. That's great. And it's pretty much just going to burn through all of that. We've got some stored. And, man, it kicks through that stuff so fast. There we go. This stuff could use a speed increase. It's too bad it doesn't work in the macerator. Like, I mean, technically, I think if we went with, like, a immersive engineering crusher, it'd probably be a little bit faster. I mean, there's an enrichment chamber, which, yeah, we did, like, an enriching factory. Mechanical squeezer would be a little bit better output, but, meh. <laughs> Sag meal. We have a chance to get diamonds, but don't really care. Um, honestly, the extra utilities crushers, once we start getting GP and really speed it up, we might change it over to that. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, under normal circumstances, this double crusher, probably two double crushers should be plenty. But like right now, I think it's probably this chest here. See, it's all backed up in there. Lots of coal it has to go through. So what I'm going to do is let me go make another double crusher. In fact. And how much coal do we even have in the drawers at the moment? Uh, actually, not as much as I expected. Okay. Okay, we'll just put that one right there. Let me grab this for right now. And we'll just bring this along with us. And right here, we're going to say connector. We're going to say network cable. <laughs> and then all we have to do is just repeat that exact same white list that we set up before with all of this stuff. We're going to say right here that you can insert, and we'll just add these things to the whitelist. And actually, there's a there's a copy connector to clipboard that you can use, I guess. But um, Then we're just going to say that you can extract stack 20. There we go. Okay. And if we take a look here, that's working. And we'll go ahead and say auto split items is on. And there we go. It's processing everything. And if we take a look inside of here, there we go. It's steadily eating through the, the stuff that's in here. It's going to take a little while, but that's okay. Um, so anyways, that stuff's being handled. And then technically we can now, well, actually, whenever we throw ores in here, like, for example, I've got all this stuff. Let me, uh, let me grab this. Let me take it back out of here. I'm going to want to take that back up uh, here in just a second. But I've got all these ores. And now we can technically just dump everything into this chest. Because I was actually like holding on to things. That's the reason I haven't just been dumping it in. Because we didn't really have everything fully automated. There we go. It goes in the mass writer. goes in the ore washing plant. Thermal centrifuge. And then electric furnaces that uh, smelt things. <laughs> It's like wah, 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 wah. It reminds me of that. Rof my raffle copter goes swish, 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 swish. Whenever this thing runs. Um, we'll go ahead and just grab these other things. And there we go. That looks like everything out of here. So we'll just dump that there. See, it's actually having issues. Pulling out. I may have to actually speed this up. Um... Yeah, can see it's just not it's not fast enough to get that copper pulled out. So normally I like to set everything to the 20 ticks. It's just not fast enough for our ore processing system. Because everything kind of crafts instantly. So right here, the centrifuges. Where's that one even located? Oh, it's over there. Okay, I know which one that is. Um, but over here, this setup, we're going to say 10. Right here, we'll say 10. That's macerator, we'll say... 
Tien, ore washing, Tien. Okay, so now it's pulling everything out. It's just, it's so fast. Like, I mean, these machines, a lot of them aren't even kicking on because it's so quick about it. Like, look at that. I need more water. <laughs> I actually need more water coming into this because it's just too fast at the moment. So, that's an easy fix, even though I don't know that I have enough connection spaces here for this. Actually, I can put one here. We're going to say, don't connect on the upside. And then we'll connect one right there. Don't connect on the upside. Bring that over. And if I said... Extract... Extract. Is it getting enough water now? It's getting more water. But I still... Might need a little bit more water. Either that or just get one of those infinite water blocks of nuclear craft. Uh, the really, really good ones. Uh, produces 1,280 millibuckets a tick of water constantly. And then maybe add that in too. We might be able to pull it off then. I don't know. We'll see. But see, it's just, it's crazy fast. Well, yeah, there's no more ores at the moment, but... There we go. <laughs> and it's just kicking stuff out in the electric furnace and smelting it. It's super fast, basically. The crushers are like the slower point, but the crushers actually aren't going to be getting anything from our ore system. From our main ore system, anyways. Um, so it's not that big of an issue. Later on, whenever we set up our... I may eventually have to speed this up. That's fine. Um, because we're going to have uh, maybe some void miners going. I don't know. We might even just trash the stuff from the void miners. Except for the ores and stuff that we actually want. I don't know. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. Because we're going to have all that stuff that we can really use. Just from the orchid setup. And then let's pop down to the Batania area. And I got to thinking. I think we're going to have the Gaia Guardian Arena over here. Um, over in this section. So over here we're actually going to have the ore generation. As well as a mana setup. Um, on this side. Maybe a couple mana setups. We'll see. But I think this wall right here would be perfect for our, our uh, ore generation system. So this thing has a fairly decent range. I want to say it's uh, 9 by 9 or something like that. Uh, let's grab this. So 11 by 11, in fact. So it would cover this entire area if we set it up right here. Which I think would be good because there'd be a little bit of clearance off the back. And, you know, you step out and there's going to be, you know, this is where we're going to be making ores at. So what we're going to do is right here, we're going to make a couple indentions. So it's going to run from there, there, so it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it'd basically be like that is what we're looking at. So all of those are going to be lines where stone comes out. And then, you know, the orchid will transform it, and then um, it'll get mined up, and then stuff will get processed, and then we'll make mana and all that good stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is right back in here, we're going to dig these out just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to set down uh, pistons. Let's see, is this where I want them? Yeah. Piston right there, 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 there there and there okay so all together we have six places where this is going to be created at and then right back in here we're going to, have to set up a little bit of a little bit of stuff here um we'll dig out right there we'll dig out right there and right there okay what i need to do now is i need to go get some lava which luckily we have right over here and actually, do I have another bucket? I do. Let me grab that. And we're going to grab three buckets of lava. I think that's all I need. We'll go ahead and set up this part, and then we'll be setting up most of the main for our next episode. And then right here, we're going to dig out a block there. There. Basically in all these spots. Hopefully this works. There's other ways, of course, you could make stone. Um, you know, there's plenty of ways in this pack to make stone. Uh, but I think this method should be good for us. So we're going to put lava right there. 
and it's gonna flow it's gonna drop down that's fine then we're gonna do another thing of lava right there and then our last thing of lava right there and then let's grab our rod of seas that we made last episode see we're gonna make we're gonna make use of this thing and then right let's see which I am gonna have to get back there that's fine I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna dig out right here we'll probably end up putting false blocks in here so we can actually get behind this if we need to you know if we end up needing if we need to get back here we are gonna have a little bit of redstone back here so we are gonna have to get back here at least at some point so one two three four five six that's great let's go ahead and open this up we'll be using this next episode we have a lot of stuff to set up next episode so I figure we'll go ahead and get a head start on this this episode um, and then right here we'll do you know stone so that's hidden away and then let's see right here and here we'll do stone for now it's probably going to change but I just don't know if I want to bring those hedges around probably not um, we'll probably bring something else around on this side I'm just not sure exactly what I want to put up there you know so Go ahead and open this up a little bit and then we'll dig out right there 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 and then there we go okay so now we're going to take our rod of the seas we're going to put down a water source block there 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 or wait i'm sorry i have it backwards right <laughs> ain't that right <laughs> whoops it's when lava hits water from the top <laughs> That's what I meant to do. See, I'm like... I got some pro vanilla skills here. No, um... Let me just fix this real quick. So what we'll do instead, we'll have, uh... Right up here, we'll open this block up. Put lava there. And then do the same thing on these. So a single source block. We can basically use three source blocks and get six stone production going um you know i considered using like an igneous extruder or something like that but eh, this is a little bit more fun a little bit more um effort and it's gonna actually look pretty cool so like once everything is all set up okay so you'll notice right back there there is stone that has been created so there we go and then what we're going to do is let's uh let me pop over here. Let's get ourselves just, um, do we want to just make an hourglass? Is that what we want to do? I'm thinking, yes. We'll just make a hovering hourglass. And we're going to want to do, let's do, uh, let's do four seconds. Okay. So we'll just take four pieces of sand. Let's get ourselves just some redstone dust. And... Then let's also just get some cobblestone. Okay, and um, of course the vanilla pistons have a range of 12, right? So if I recall, if so, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That would put the blocks at max distance getting right here. Um, what I could do, and what I think I'm going to do actually, let's grab this. Let's just move it up a few blocks. Um, yeah, that'll be perfect. It'll be lined up right with the front of that, which will be good. That should be good. And we'll test it here in just a second. Not the orb making aspect of it, but just to make sure that this is all working, uh, correctly. And it's actually probably going to change some of these blocks down here. That's fine. I'm going to change them to grass anyways. Um, we're going to put down cobblestone right there along the back side. Eventually this is going to be block breakers. But for right now, we just want cobblestone. Okay, and then we're going to set up a, just a little bit of redstone back here. Just a very, very simple redstone system. Redstone goes into the pistons. So redstone comes out. It's going to go over like that. It's going to go over like that. And then if we put an hourglass right here with the redstone connect, it does. That's great. And we're going to take... Um, and let me actually grab one thing we can use to turn this off. Um, which eventually, later on, I'll put the I'll put the switch for it outside and just use, you know, maybe wireless redstone or something like that. 
um, probably next episode. So, but right now we just we're kind of just setting this up just to get the redstone down and the pistons. So the stone generation's done. It's easy, you know. Um, we could put a lever just sitting, you know, right there. And so what's going to happen is it's basically going to stop the system whenever uh, this is activated. However, we do have this. Let me actually let me actually just move this back. In fact. So that way that makes a full circuit and then we'll connect the redstone right there okay so now if I was to do that you can see it stops um, it's not gonna make any more stone and uh, no stones can be generated that's flat because it hasn't pushed out like a full block okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put sand right in there and there shouldn't be any possible way for this to ever really back up and we'll give it just a second there we go. The stone comes out. You know, I actually used this same setup in um, a few other packs, like a few other times in the past, or similar setups for this. I think, um, I know in Farming Valley we used a setup kind of similar. We had them coming down from the ceilings, and it was for something else. I can't remember. When we were doing, like, the full cobble works, we did something similar in Sprout. We did something similar in uh, that one... Uh, Qantas or whatever pack um, but basically it's gonna just steadily push the stone back towards us and then this whole time if the orchid had mana it would be converting that stone into ores and then at the end we would have breakers and then technically if we wanted to we could stack these up you know we could do another line right above it like probably right there probably be pretty good and uh, you know another orchid or whatever um, we could also line orchids down this so it converts, but it's going to be super fast. As long as it has a mana, it should convert. So, um, But you can see that it's not pushing any further. The cobblestone has basically stopped it. Well, not the cobblestone. It's just reached the maximum distance is what it is. But this cobblestone will eventually be breakers. And that goes right to the edge of the orchid's uh, vision. So there we go. And then just for a little visual, <laughs> before we end out the episode... Let me get a mana pool. I actually made one of these fabulous mana pools uh, earlier. And let me get my Wand of the Forest. We're going to set up our fabulous mana pool setting, say, right here. And then we're going to have... Uh, let's see, that's collecting mana. Let's go ahead and toss in our ring. And then I will say, I mean, this uses a, a lot of mana. This We're going to put it in the full half ring that we've got. We're going to put the full thing in there. You know, I can recharge and stuff, but we're going to have a decent amount of mana. Now, right now, it's not linked. We're going to link that in just a second, but let's go ahead. It's probably only going to be about a fourth of a pool. Normally, these rings, if they're filled, they're a full pool, or I mean a half a pool. And this one is, yeah, just just uh, just past uh, a fourth of a pool. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shift right click, right click, and we'll give it just a second here, and it actually might. It's converting, but I think it's converting stuff below it right now. That's going to be the biggest thing is we're going to have to actually give this some time to convert. Uh-oh. Is that sound? I don't remember it ever... I don't ever remember it making that sound. We might actually want additional orchids. It's not super fast. But that's okay. <laughs> what is this? What is this sound it makes? Yeah, it's taking a little while. I think I might actually end up making some more orchids so it's a little bit faster. Um, but before we worry about that, we really have to worry about the amount of mana... Um, you know that we have because I just right now I don't have mana generation um, yeah that's new there's osmium right there um, which really I could come down here and just dig all of this up so we wouldn't have to worry so much about it trying to convert that I mean a lot of this is actually andesite uh, in fact there's some appetite which I know doesn't spawn at this Y level so that's got to be from that oh there's some yellow right so, see, it is working. We just have to, we're going to have to give it some time or I'm going to have to clean up all the stone. I will probably clean up all the stone within range of it because it does go down like, I think it's like two or three blocks or something like that. So, I will have to clean up some of that. But this all should be out of range as far as, you know, this wall. So, this couldn't have been from that. Um, so, I'll work on changing over that between episodes. But next episode, when we come back, we'll be ready to actually start on the mana generation side of things. The collection side of things and actually just getting this whole system running and automated and all those goodies so uh, that's what we'll be doing next episode
and that's basically gonna stop up this system so um, I'm assuming that it'll reach yeah it reaches good and then eventually we'll probably just put like a redstone lever on the front of this and then we can come over I'm actually probably gonna put uh, I don't know if I'm gonna put glass there you know I'm actually half tempted to drop this down into the floor you know I've done that in the past I don't know I'm gonna give it some thoughts because part of me thinks uh, we could put it down the floor but we could also make this kind of rise up. I'm going to do a little bit of playing around. See what I like for the build. So, But make it kind of raised and come up off the ground. Or just build it down by two maybe. And then put glass on the top so we can watch it from above. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Um, actually probably above. And then we could maybe do or drop it down two blocks. I might do that. I might drop it down two blocks between episodes. Um, if, that's, if that's what I decide I want to do. And then we could put the mana generation on top of it. Which I think would look pretty good. So, we'll see. We shall see. So, anyways. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. What's this? Oh, that's one of those bugs. If you're not already, to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So, until then, as always... Do take care. Stay safe. I can't wait to see you guys for next episode. It's going to be fun stuff. But I'll see you guys then.